This is Man of Metropolis with Seth Travis. Today's guest is actor Billy Magnuson. I'm Seth Travis. I'm a creative director here in New York City and also founder of Man of Metropolis and Metropolis Report. I think I'm at that stage in my life where I want more of this kind of stuff. So hopefully we can do more of the yeah, entertainment stuff. You want to hear the story behind everything. Like it is amazing. Like people have made careers at just looking good. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's crazy. But then you do have like designers. Like I remember seeing that Alexander McQueen exhibit at, um, it was, which one was it at? Natural history. It was uh, on the East Maybe the Guggenheim, Guggenheim, I think. Guggenheim what, no. or Homa? I don't know. It it's was so it was unbelievable. Like that guy made some crazy shit. Yeah. And you're like, wow, this is just a beautiful piece of work. You know, it, it's funny, like I think of that, like women's shoes sometimes, I think they just look good like on the shelf. Like it just looks nice. Yeah, it's like, a piece of art. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. Like, you want to spend a thousand dollars on a pair of high heels. I mean, maybe you don't want to, but or maybe you do. Maybe I do. You know, don't. <laughs> I don't know what you're into. <laughs> oh my! Did you see on RuPaul's Drag Show, Drag Race, that there was a trans, like um, a woman to a man, then doing drag? So it was a woman to a man. So he right then went into drag as a her. Interesting. That's um, great. Yeah. You know what? You're going to think this is crazy and I'm you're like, you're going to revoke my gay card. I have never seen one episode of Ru Ru RuPaul's Drag Race ever. Either, no judgment. No yeah. judgment. No, I have not either. Someone just told me about this and I was like, oh, wow, that's that's got to be a mind fuck because you, you transition to a man and then you're now doing drag to be back to a woman. You're just it's like, crazy. What? When I'm on Twitter and everyone's talking about the new episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, I'm all, I, like, I got into football about six years ago. So, like, I watch, we have NFL ticket and we fly to Denver and go to different places when you can to go to games. And, like, all my gay friends are like, you're so weird. Like, you don't know who, who's on RuPaul's Drag Race, but you know every quarterback of all 32. <laughs> That's you know, so. a stereotype. That's what I, yeah. Who? How does your sexual preference determine the things you have to like? You right. Know? It's so, yeah. Yeah. It, it's stereotype. I have a good friend of mine. He was actually my first agent, this guy, Charles. And like, same thing. He was a big sports guy, whatever. You talked to him, you'd never know he was gay, but he hmm. was just he, 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 who he was, you know? Interesting. Really great cool. guy. Cool. <laughs> I thank you for yesterday again. I honestly, it was really inspiring just sort of watching you, you know, do your thing, like, and kind of your personality come out. And um, oh, I it's think, well, with a great group of people around you and you're just, look, we're just having fun. What, what else is there to do? Right? Yeah, for sure. That's how I feel with the acting stuff. It's like organized chaos. You know what the job is. You, you prepare as much as you can and then you just let it go. Yep. Yeah. That's all you can do. Yeah, it's all you can do because I don't know what I'm doing. I have no clue. Do Especially you? right now. I feel like in the last year, if you thought you had control of your life, whoo. <laughs> You're telling me, man. Joke's on you. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. The more it's true, the more you get older and more knowledgeable you become, it's yeah. like, fuck, oh, the less I know. And like, you do you slowly just have to be present more and more and just take life as it is and yeah. all you can control is how you react to it and i imagine i mean obviously we'll like get serious and and do this video for you because i don't want to keep you forever but um i just imagine like off the record like you know i just go, i in my mind i go back to like getting out of graduate school and interviewing for jobs and you know in 2009 when the economy tanked and I'm interviewing for jobs again. And it's like, as an actor, you're constantly like your job is to interview, right? Like yeah. obviously you're, the lo the long game is to book every job you interview for, yeah. but that's gotta be, you know, that has to create a lot of thick skin. Um, yeah, you could put this on the record. I, I, it's, it's a, it's a game of being getting told no 
over and over again and how thick your skin is to keep trudging ahead because like with a hundred no's it just takes that one yes and that's and the right thing will will show up it does it does wear you down over and over and still i still get no's all the time you know but i do have to thank my entire career you know to the chris's and the sars guards and uh oh. the hems brothers all for passing on projects and that's how my career has happened interesting you know? yeah um yeah it's all the time but that's the game you keep fighting for it or you keep keep hustling run, run, uh, yeah in the streets yeah. and make the most of it again you and then you build you strike me as someone who's very like easygoing and go with the flow. Is that your, is that natural for you? Or is that, is that something you've had to learn with age? Uh, I would say I'm less easygoing in all that now. When oh. I was young, I was like, whatever, let fly. And then like, as you become more of a man, I don't know, your empathy has to grow. And like, there used to be a time where I thought my shit didn't stink. And, you know, I was not selfish, but, you know, very uh, self, self-centered, self I guess. And then, like, as I've grown and from wonderful relationships I've had with uh, people, like, you know, you really grow to empathize and, like, welcome more and more people into your life because we all don't know what we're doing. And no one's a, no one's a villain in their story, you know? True. So, yeah. 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 And you don't well, have to make it. Going. yeah well speaking of i mean you know to properly introduce you you know billy magnuson an actor who has a new hit show on hbo max um you know made for love is a really interesting series um you play the character of byron gogol which i think yeah. is so funny because it sounds so close to google and yeah. then i want to talk about like how they dress you um, I mean, you know, we're a fashion magazine, so I would love to kind of talk to you about uh, oh, how you created Byron with the directors and the and the. Um, I, it and, all comes to our wardrobe designer Jen. Like she was unbelievable, and hours and hours of meeting and like going over the wardrobe and fittings and tailoring because I think it actually plays a huge part of the world of the hub that everything is slick and sleek. Cause like think of all the, you know, modern technology and now it's all sleek and it's whatever. And it has to be uh, representative, uh, representative of, of him and the, the way he views the world. You know, a guy that wants to control everything, everything's code, everything has a thing, A equals B, B equals C. So it's a pattern. Um, and I think the, the, the wardrobe really reflects that. This color palette matches this, everyone wears these colors. And then you get into the real world and you realize it's all chaos and you can't control it. Just like a relationship. You could try to, you know, say, I plan on one year meeting the person, two years we're getting married, three years we're having a baby. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. And even if every time you try, it's going to just implode on itself, I think. Yeah. You're yeah. Really, right? And she gets weird. It's, it's a... I mean, it's a out of box, uh, you know, especially I think with streaming series, series, you get to see people explore very different characters and very different storylines. And it's there's kind of like a sci-fi element to it, um, mm -hmm. but also because of Silicon Valley and because of all the crazy stuff that they are actually making in real life from a technology standpoint, like some of the stuff isn't too outlandish. No. Which but, is scary. <laughs> yeah, it's very scary. Like, I don't think we're that far away for something like this. I mean, this tells us everything we need, when to eat, when to breathe. I have, you have a watch on your wrist that tells you when to breathe. Or, you know, have you ever seen that with the Apple Watches? Oh, yeah. Um, but I do want to say Christina Lee and um, Alyssa Nutting, what they did with Made for Love, which is so brilliant. They use that tool of like the tech and the sci-fi and the dark comedy to actually open up a conversation about relationships mm. and it's yes it's extreme circumstances and it's heightened like that but at the end of the day you're watching um uh, uh these people just trying to connect with each other 
and how they miss each other constantly. And uh, I, I think they were really brilliant in um, setting it up that way. Because I mean, like the I don't spoil alert or what well, doesn't have to be on. <laughs> have you seen it? Yeah, the whole and honestly, I was totally taken off guard in the last episode. I yeah. was I did not expect it at all. That ending when she looks up, isn't that cool? Like that was I thought that was I knew it was ha- going to come, and I remember watching it and I was like, oh, I'm so satisfied, but at the same time, like. A little disgusted and hurt like i'm very weird there's a weird emotion that comes with it because you're like there i, I kind of would have done the same thing if i was in her position you yeah you know that's what's exciting you you like I, it sounds weird as an artist and, and an actor you just hope people see themselves weirdly in in a project and they'd be like oh i i do that that's yeah and um, because that's the, that's all we have. We have we can just relate to other people. Um, I'm going off topic. Well, and I think yeah. there, and I think it's funny because there's obvious. And I I'm going to be careful with spoilers. Um, but even you know, in one scene towards the end of the series, um, I don't know if there's going to be a season two or not. But uh, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, let's hope, man. <laughs> in the world of streaming and COVID nineteen, you could have five more seasons. Who knows? Um, <laughs> But uh, I, I just thought even for you as an actor getting to play this kind of off, you know, outlandish character, you really had some special moments in that last episode in the diner. That's all I'm going to say. Like, like yeah. there was sort of a, you went layers deeper than maybe we saw in Byron throughout the, mm-hmm. the series. So that, that, was, that was cool to watch. Yeah, it, it's exciting to play because as I, as I was actually you know, like getting deeper and deeper into the character and realizing it, you're like, there was levels of myself that, you know, I, again, I, I've done this in other interviews or talked about it, but this toxic masculinity and that a lot of what we do is just a front because of this world we're taught and like the emotions that we all have, we have them, but why do we suppress them or hide them? Or what are we actually scared uh, of by sh- sharing them? Mm-hmm. And, and, I really don't know the answer but in like it's a question i catch myself all the time why 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 are you hiding right now why are you you know protecting something that you know would probably be more it would be better let out uh, i don't know yeah I, I think it's a crazy crazy world because but at the same time we ha- i i grew up in a place where yes toxic masculinity and you're trained to not feel emotions in the fucking locker room with the dudes. You're just like, <laughs> you know, they're picking on you, whatever, and you're you're throwing around shit. But at the same time, I think females in our society put us in the same box that we have to mm. be aggressive and like, you know, um, especially like looking for a date. You know, it's like this weird. I don't know. It's it's not. I don't want to say it's just men, but I think women too are like. I don't know where I'm going with this conversation. No, I think it's great because I, you know, I mean, listen, I've been, I've been married for five years with my husband for 15, but we were talking just briefly yesterday on set. But I think even if you go back to the heart of Byron, like you, as you see his character unfold and made for love, like he just wants to be accepted and be loved. And he obviously has trauma from his, you know, from growing up. And he has this connection. Um, and I think that's kind of what we all want is that connection. And I think you're saying, you know, we also want to connect authentically and not feel like we're expected to be a certain type of person when we approach someone. Yeah. Yeah. The show. You, I, you get tired of putting on the, the fake show and the fake personality. And then at some point, it always cracks. You know, but this I is good. That. This is good. Um, so I guess maybe wrapping up the topic about Made for Love, I mean, what do you feel like, like, what do you want your friends and family and maybe people in your life that really matter to you, what do you want them to take away from this, this project? I, I, I go back to that, like, they kind of see themselves and how they can see themselves in the project and be like, 
oh, I do these little things of like little things of trying to control and right. control someone else or acceptance of someone else. And I, I just want them to put themselves in check and be like, oh, wow. You know, again, I want them to have a good time, laugh and escape from the world a little bit. But like under it all, it's, you know, it's a conversation about what it is to be in a relationship and like what is the right distance and how deep can you be involved and what is really accepting or opening up and like being a partner um yeah there, it's just it's on two two levels like entertaining and fun and just like god i want to see some more and then the other thing is just take a second and watch it and be like holy shit i do that <laughs> 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 that would be my goal i mean uh, I, that the ending of the series like the season i'm like damn i relate to that so much yeah that uh i have to say on i know we were talking kind of at the heart of your character and kind of what the story is about but um i'd be remiss to not talk about the fashion that your character is wearing throughout the whole series kind of the sort of the silicon valley glasses and then that i think the last look you're in is like a navy polo with navy trousers with your glasses and it's just i'm like asking myself when i'm watching this scene happen um you know what ceo you know in california is gonna like cop your your <laughs> as the kids say you know what i'm saying yeah, those, those the glasses actually is a very i thought it was very important to have those glasses a, I saw, uh, there was this guy I saw once, and I met him, and I was like, that guy's the biggest douchebag I know, uh, you know, and he had glasses like that, so that's partly why I picked him, yeah. but what it does for me, there's always a barrier between him and the world, even mm -hmm. you can't even look him directly in the eye, yeah. and there's still something blocking it, there's a guard, there's always a guard that he's having in front of him, that's why I chose the glasses, so only certain times is he taking it off like the the diner scene you yep. know but the it was just a guy that's always trying to protect himself from the world and uh, uh the outfits again i, I jen the, the the wardrobe designer she's unbelievable i mean some of the outfits and i love the high waist look she kept throwing yeah. on me I was, this is this is cool well you're also, tall so you can pull that off you consider me tall? I'll take it. I don't consider you five eleven, six foot. Yeah, five, 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 I'm just under six foot. I'm the shortest. <laughs> of, I'm the oldest of my brothers, and I'm the only one under uh, six feet. You know, but like Tom Cruise is like five five, right? Or five six? I, I don't know. I'd give him a high five still. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just mean like I feel like for actors, you you can kind of you know your height doesn't matter as much. But anyway. Yeah. Um, well, I'm life. <laughs> And then the last question is, do you take, are you allowed to take stuff when the show's over? Cause like, were there, were any of those clothes? Like, did you like them? Were you like, oh, you're done with these. Can I oh, take them? No, not really. I always wonder about that. Well, there are times like if a show's done, done, right. we can buy some of the wardrobe. Okay. At a discounted rate, but like this, you know, hopefully for a season two, they're just, you You've heard the uh, the term build a closet yeah character yeah so they you have to keep it in the closet and build that and it all stems from like where what did they wake up and put on today you know interesting uh, yeah it's cool so yeah i just know. always wonder because it's like you have some really interesting projects under your belt right like you were in versace crime story you played kato kalen um, yeah or like that honestly, was American Crime Story. It was the O.J. Simpson. Oh, I'm story. sorry. Yeah, yeah, O.J. Simpson. Um, I don't know how I confuse those, but um, and then no, what's you that? Know, the Versace one was great too. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. I wish um, I did it. You know, I just always wonder if actors like I don't know if you have like a spare room, like a game room or something, and you like have like one outfit from each character oh, that you played or no, I do, but there's like little things I've kept from each character, like a necklace here. Okay. Like I, Prince Anders had this giant ring that he had. So I like kept that. And nice. Stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Like little, little trinkets here and there. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to, you know, pivot and talk about this project that you're filming in Georgia. And, and I think you're also building a house, but um, I, I have to ask you about game night because just personally, you know, when we originally started talking about doing this story with you, I was so excited because when I saw you in game night, I was like, I love this guy. I mean, I went home and Googled you and like, looked I at love you, everything else you were doing. And you were so funny in that movie. Um, and then obviously, you know, you've been in a lot of other things and um, I'll try to get something out of you about this James Bond movie at some point before we go today. But, um, but tell me a little bit about, I mean, you kind of, you kind of have this very like uh, rugged earthy look going on that seems like it's matching your new life in Georgia and this, and this house you're working on kind of fill us in on what's going on. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I had finished a project in LA. Uh, I, I kind of got stuck in LA during the COVID time project finally we were able to finish it and I was like I need to get out I had some personal things happen in my life so I just needed a reset my family I got my family my parents a house on this lake down there and this other house opened up so me and my bro just went in on it and got it very close to my parents and I honestly it was just some time for me like usually after every project I do I would go on like a trip to uh, anywhere around the world where I didn't speak the language or know the area just to kind of reconnect to myself in a weird way, like go through the world as just who I am at that moment and remember who, who Billy is. Yeah. Um, so I kind of did that with going down to Georgia. We're renovating my parents' house. So like we're literally going down the line of the house, the roof, everything, just rebuilding and constructing the whole thing, you know? And it's been really nice to do that with my parents and help them, you know? My father was a carpenter and uh, he's retired now. So it's just like me and him knocking down walls and putting them back up. And uh, I don't know, it's just such a nice pace and just relax. And I'll always have this house now that yeah. me and my dad no, it's it's a really cool thing and my brothers of course help but did you grow up like helping him out as a kid or is this something that's like a you're like i'm finally gonna pick up two by fours and get a saw uh, i grew up in a carpentry shop i okay. have all the cuts and the nail holes from my shooting my fingers and stuff uh i have all the scars um yeah i just grew up in a carpentry shop but i just it wasn't the life i wanted to go down i mean literally since i was like five i was in that carpentry shot every summer i was just working it, working it and then finally college came and i was like uh, got the opportunity to go to north carolina school of the arts and just kind of went down this like rabbit hole of uh acting and theater theater work and yeah i'm so glad i have those like those skills and that that um that craft in me um but it wasn't my life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find yourself um, like when you're on sets of projects, are you talking to like the set designers and asking them like how they build stuff? Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's a, I think the set designers and all the crew that do that stuff is unbelievable. They'll just like, and in a day, it seems like they do it. Like yeah. I remember Maniac. The, the sets they were building that were all this futuristic, crazy, you know, the landscape. Someone had to come up with it and they're like, now I'll build that. Oh my gosh. So I was doing Into the Woods. This is what's crazy. <laughs> okay. You're in two, uh, ha two hangars in London and you walk in and you're in a forest, like a complete forest, but it, two airplane hangars yeah. and they built forest and all i could think about is like someone had to go around and glue or staple every leaf onto the tree and that was a job yeah same like think about that someone had to do that yeah but yeah that, that it's impressive unbelievably uh, unbelievably impressive and you just kind of show up and it's there it's done it's right you're like they're like three two one action yeah. <laughs> how many things i've broken on set so many times <laughs> so there's I didn't a couple, know it there are a couple set designers out there that uh 
have yeah. your have your name on their list. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, theater too. Like the, I mean, what's happening in theater now, and what those people can do in one setting, and how it can move and transform in one one show. Like, yeah. it's unbelievable. That that's that's a skill, and the vision to see it is just awing. Yeah. You know, since you're talking about theater and, you know, you mentioned growing up in Queens, um, do you feel like was Broadway and theater in New York City something that really kind of took hold of you growing up no. much? No, I like, I, I remember I think my parents took me to see like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the musical, <laughs> you know, but uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't a part of our lives growing up. You know, my parents, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, blue collar dad working, uh, you know, construction. He owned a glass company for a long time. Um, no, it just, it, I, it wasn't really even on my radar, to tell you mm. the truth. Um, yeah, I kind of, like, I don't know where it came from. I just remember always, like, if our, a class was doing a, a showcase or something, you know, like a presentation, they would always have me MC. Cause I was just loud, I guess. I don't know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it might have stemmed from there. But I never, I never uh, ever imagined it would get yeah. to this, you know. It's crazy. I was big into sports, just hurt myself, couldn't take a gym class, so they like put me in the theater class, and it just kind of like unraveled from there. And to tell you the truth, once I got into it, and it was always theater going to college all I wanted to do I would feel I would have at the time success was just being on a, doing a Broadway show that okay was, that was the thing and it, it's really funny you know I got out of school and I kind of hit it I hit it like very quickly after school I was able to be in a Broadway show and I'm, then I'm 23 and I was like I don't know what else to do. Like I hit my weird dream. So now this career that's happened since then is just like so unexpected and unbelievable. I'm like so grateful for it, but I don't even know where to go with it. That's hmm. what's great. I, I, you know, the dream was hit. And so I'm like a little, not lost, but like, what do you do next? Yeah, you know? especially if it's not like you've just been in one good movie or you've done a series. I mean, the fact that you've done Aladdin, the fact that you, you know, were in that O.J. Simpson crime story. I mean, again, I, I know you probably can't say much, but it's a good time to mention James Bond and talk yeah. about being in the biggest franchise in movie history. You're in a movie. You say James that. Bond movie. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And I it, I wish I saw it. I don't I see it that way, you know. Yeah. I had a buddy call me up and he was like, Hey, you want you wanna I got a character for you. Can you do this? And I was like, Yeah, of course. And at the end of the day, it's it's just again, it's a job. Like yeah. you're hot a job. Yes, there's so many beautiful things about it. And like you said, the biggest franchise in the world. Um yeah, it's but I, I, yeah, it, I, you kind of just live it and you like go through it. It's, I would like, I could see from being on the outside and watching and be like, holy shit. Yeah. But when you're going through it, it's like, just do your job. Like, don't fuck this up. You know? Right. You're still worried about that part. Um, I guess it's great. like probably playing in the Super Bowl. You don't have time to be, oh my God, I'm playing in the Super Bowl because then yeah. you lose. You just yeah. have to have your head in the game yeah well that's like i was i watched hockey the other night at the rangers game and like i was thinking about these people they're playing in madison square garden for the new york rangers <laughs> but the day they they're just playing the game it's the same game they've been playing since they were a kid yeah it doesn't matter where it is they're just playing the game because they love it and i guess like acting it's kind of the same thing it doesn't matter where it is you're just doing that thing you like like doing and you still yeah. got to get the job done gary oldman i think i might it might have been gary oldman but he always there was he once said um 
what was it? He was like, he was auditioning for, to play Macbeth. And he finally, he, he found out and got the role. He was like, holy shit, I'm playing Macbeth, I'm playing Macbeth. And at the same time, he's like, holy shit, I'm playing Macbeth. Because he had to do all the work now. Yeah. To, and it's like, which one do you focus on, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the work. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, before I ask you kind of what's what's up next for you that you might want to promote or talk about, um, I got to ask you, obviously the name is incredible, Logan Ash. Maybe you can't tell us anything about the character, but did you do any training, any physical training, combat training? Like, was there anything that you can tell us that you did to prepare to be in uh, No Time to Die? Uh, you know, he's a CIA agent okay. uh, with Felix and... Uh, I did a lot of training. Like I did, there was this amazing French uh, stunt group team, whatever. And I showed up to London, I think two months earlier, and we just trained all the time, boxing, punching guns, and it was it was awesome. Yeah. You know, you're just training for the stuff, and I hope it pays off. I hope it looks good, you know. But it, great workout. Um, yeah, it was a lot of training every day and so, did you put on muscle did you lose weight like what was your sort of post 007 body like uh I don't know, hopefully a little slimmer you know <laughs> yeah i gain weight really easy so it's a constant battle all the time like everyone welcome know? to your 30s <laughs> <laughs> yeah right oh my god i mean I'm on my way out of my 30s which is crazy Jesus. Yeah. yeah. It's it's this COVID thing, man. I was 34 and then I'm now 36. Like yeah. where'd that year go? I hear you. I turned 40 during the pandemic and I was like, this is not I was like, I'm supposed to be in Hawaii or something, trying yeah. to, you know, I don't know, surf away the fact that I'm no longer in my 30s, but I know. <laughs> it's crazy. It goes so fast, but again. Like our photo shoot yesterday, you just got to take that moment for what it is and just have fun with it. What's what's the point of being too serious or, I don't know, just don't, oh man. Biggest lesson I learned through all these years of having a career is like, don't be a fucking asshole. That's, that's the best thing you could do. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Don't be a dick. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what makes you probably successful both in your career and in life, though. People don't want to be around someone who is a dick no no one does and it gets around fast now in this industry you know like who do you want to work with because we we're all spending our time with these people and don't you want to be around people you care about and uh, trust and love yeah like right that's the way to do it all 100 percent yeah well so to wrap up you had said that you kind of had this sort of shift in your life um, either during the pandemic or right before the pandemic, um, where you kind of moved from from the West Coast and you're building this house and working on a passion project right now, or maybe you just wrapped it. But, you know, I, it, the world's getting vaccines. It feels really hopeful as we head into summer 2021. Thank God! Right? What do you, what do you have planned for your life, both either personally and professionally, to just kind of, you know, live your best life, if you will? just want to uh i hope i could be accepting of every moment that comes and is presented in front of me that's all i want because if i could do that i think i could be content with life I'd be okay with it yeah you know just be present to whatever the moment is i don't know where i'll be obviously we don't know what will happen yeah but in this moment i'm with you and i really am enjoying this interview and your time and i'm like I feel good about it. It's awesome. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could just say ditto. We we really enjoyed, you know, the shoot with you and can't wait to, you know, premiere that story with this interview. And I think, you know, our viewers, watchers, fans alike will really enjoy it. I think you were a, a ball of energy and jumping through that paper was amazing. Well, have you seen that ever? I don't know. I don't know if I've seen that. So I've seen a couple of kind of like hike hype beast kind of fitness sports stories where they'll have like a, a foot going through with like a like a sneaker on or something, but 
I've never seen anybody. Um, and I mean, honestly, we're very editorial and story heavy as a magazine um, because of Instagram kind of ruling the world. So we've probably shot 300 stories in the last six years. I've never seen anybody jump through paper and have that energy yesterday. So honestly, as an editor, <laughs> you really entertained me. Like, Thanks for and, taking those photos too, man. And it was funny to see Augie kind of get scared when you punch through the paper. So, yeah. I mean, I think all in all, I know we have, we're going to have really good images, really great interview, great cover story, but like, the shoot was super fun. So I guess I, I got a little bit of an insight to maybe what it would be like to be a castmate of yours in Aladdin or in game night. Yeah. Oh my God. What do you think about social media? You know, I, the day after the Capitol insurgents or whatever they call it on January 6th, I deleted my Facebook on January 7th because I just feel like, you know, everyone is just sort of shouting to their own, tribe of people rather than listening to others and getting different people's perspectives. And I just didn't want to be a part of that anymore. And I felt like Facebook had officially, officially become that. Um, and I definitely think of the, with the pandemic, there's been days I want to just delete everything, but with what I do for a living, you, you just can't. So I've just had to really like force myself to be in the, you talk a lot about it being in the moment. Um, and, and not, yes. not be, you know, for four hours a day. Um, oh, yeah. It's, and what's, what, imagine if one of the big ones shut down, how many people would lose their identity? Yeah. And the ir irony is you can delete the app on your phone and it doesn't exist. Yeah. But like how many people would lose who they were? if you turn it off that could be like a season two of made for love <laughs> i mean there's so much you could uh unpack if you will yeah, with, yeah, yeah. With all of that deleting your life via an app but you're not that's the thing ironically i would think you would get more in touch with your life and then your life you know, it's funny since you asked, and obviously this interview is about you, but I'll just say this last thing about yeah. social media. Um, so I actually went onto my ins my personal Instagram account and I archived every photo that wasn't a landscape. Like anything that was personal, of like my goddaughter, the picture of my husband and I getting engaged in Paris. And I just archived everything. So it's just like pretty pictures of different places I've been in the world in the last 11 years. Because I, I do just feel like there's this element of like, I don't know, maybe privacy is the new luxury and maybe you need to kind of, like you say, be in the moment a little bit more and not be so, you know, my life is this square. My life is, you know, this selfie. Yeah. It's an interesting time to be alive with technology and with, uh, you know, living through this pandemic and being 36 and 40, the stuff that we're going through, we're middle-aged men. <laughs> yeah you're gonna have kids you think yeah we actually we um started to look into surrogacy about a year before the pandemic hit and started saving so Great. good luck yeah well, i wish you luck that's beautiful that's anyway beautiful. enough about me i'm sorry um yeah, do do. Yeah. but this has been such a pleasure and i really hope that uh um i hope you have a great time in new york for as much hey. longer as you're here and we're I've super been the last year i miss new york so much yeah i love this city i love this city everything it just breathes and just spews out just love there's just jazz everywhere you know the energy is so good here so i hope you get you know i hope you get filled to the brim i don't I, i'm almost there you know it's awesome or I'll, I'll be gluttonous about it awesome Billy, I mean, I could talk to you forever, but I'm sure you've got other places to, to be today. I think it's going to be a beautiful day in New York tomorrow, 80 degrees. So Woo! I hope you have a blast. Um, Let's go. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we'll definitely be in touch with with your team and with you on the story. The, the photos and stuff before you put them out, like which ones? Yeah, so I will talk to um, Augie today or tomorrow and um, he and the stylist will do like a paring down and edit. They have to develop all the film, so that'll take a few days. Oh, but, okay. Cool, cool. We'll, when, do you, when do you think this will come out? 
Uh, when we originally got you on board, we had committed to before Memorial Day weekend. So I'm at, at the very, very latest, May 31st, but we're aiming between May 15th and May 21st. Cool. Yeah, so as quick as, quick as we can go. Nice. Yeah. Again, such a pleasure, Seth, man. Yeah, you too, man. Um, seriously, and best, like, best wishes on everything in Georgia. And um, <laughs> I truly, just as a fan, I love your work. So like to have you in my magazine is like such Thanks, a trip. Bro. It's such a trip. It's, it's cool to get to do this with people that you already really like. You know, it's not just like, oh, somebody who's famous. So um, <laughs> I really, I, I really, hey, someone- it's I really love your work. So oh, I love your work too. <laughs> and you. All right, man. Be safe. Have a good time. Take I'll care. See you, man. I'm Seth Travis. I'm a creative director here in New York City and also founder of Man of Metropolis and Metropolis Report. I'd like to thank today's guest and our summer 2021 cover star, Billy Magnuson. Don't miss him in Made for Love, now streaming on HBO Max.